In this video, I'm building a farm that I didn't even think was possible in Survival Minecraft, but it's also one of the most important farms I'll ever build. You see, I've been playing in VR for over 600 days now and I still haven't made an XP farm. I even transformed a mountain for a few measly villagers without any way to repair my tools. We need to fix that. I need XP. All of my equipment is slowly breaking and I need to do something about that, so I'm gonna make an XP farm. I've already gotten some of it together, but I need a lot more. But first, I need to do some thorough testing, because this farm isn't difficult in the way that you're thinking. In all honesty, it's quite simple. It only uses nearly 200 stacks of resources. The real problem that I have with this farm is building anything around it. Let me ask you a question. After you're done with a wonderful build for your farm, what happens when the sun sets? So, to fix this, all you have to do is place a couple torches and you're done. Well, this farm is different. It uses Endermen. While I could do the same thing and place torches so Endermen can't spawn where I don't want them to, that ignores one important skill that Endermen excel at. They can teleport. And did you know that there are almost no blocks that Endermen cannot teleport to? They can even teleport to lightning rods. This is a huge problem. So I started thinking. Maybe I should just build a regular old Enderman XP farm. It would be easier, right? Well, you'd be wrong. I, I mean, right. But where's the fun in that? Torturing myself is what makes Minecraft so great. And just like every other monstrosity I've built, I want this farm to be beautiful. But I know what you might be thinking. How? Well, I just need to find every block that Enderman can't teleport to, which is easy. All I have to do is come to a compromise with them. And by compromise, I of course mean torture them. I'm gonna lay out a few blocks that I don't think they can teleport to, and then where this water is, I just spawn a few Endermen. If they want to live, they'll teleport to the block. Now it's just up to the process of elimination. Okay, so after some wholesome testing, it looks like they won't teleport to Enrods, Pots, Azalea, and Double Stacked Carpet. I think the Enrods and Carpets are exactly what I need to decorate this farm however I want. No matter what I place, I just need to cover in double stacked carpet and it's safe, I think. I already have some crazy ideas of how I just might get this build done, but I can already tell this is going to use a lot of resources, so I'm going to jump right into it and get ready to AFK ah. at my teeny tiny wolf farm. Hello guys. I'm going to need to upgrade this soon, but it's all I got. Wait a minute. Why are you Ew. here? Why does the footage look like that? What do you mean? Like it's been smushed, like Dude, I turned me the FOV slider all the way down. <laughs> Don't worry, we'll get back to this and the wool soon. It's just VR shenanigans. Anyway, another resource I'm gonna need a lot of is sandstone. I want this farm to look like a big old mushroom floating in space. And smooth sandstone has the perfect texture. And there's definitely not another mushroom looking block I could have used instead. Okay, I think that's enough sandstone. 22 stacks, now we just need to smelt this. While that's smelting, I'm gonna head to the nether. I need 40 and a half stacks of bamboo. I was stupid and didn't build a bamboo farm with the rest of my industrial district, so I need to find a jungle. All right, so here we are. Here is the village. I, I'm, I'm, I know where we're going. Oh yeah. <laughs> I had to travel super far to get here, but the new bamboo planks are going to be very important to the mushroom cap. 36, 45. We almost have six extra stacks of bamboo. On my way back through the nether, I'm going to take a quick pit stop at a mangrove swamp to grab all the wood I need. Red is going to have a big theme here. I almost got lost getting home. The more I branch out in the nether, the harder it becomes to navigate. I need to fix this, but I have more important things to do, like getting red mushroom blocks. It wouldn't be a true mushroom without some sort of mushroom related block, right? Anyway, after gathering a few more shulkers with the footage looking like that, I knew something needed to change. I usually use an ugly way to record because it would have less impact on performance. But if I wanted to get this build done, I knew I just had to fix this. Anyway, back to the grind. I want to see if I got enough wool. I really hope this is enough because wool is the single most important resource in the build. And all of this wool is just for carpet. But with all the wool gathered, I'm on my way to the end because there are only two resources left that I need. End rods and weeping vines. Believe it or not, end rods are very important to the build. 
while carpets keep everything mob-proof, N-Rods light up the build and truly bring it to life. But that's not the only reason I'm hunting down N-Rods. This gives me the perfect opportunity to get more shulker boxes while I'm at it. All right, so we have all four stacks of N-Rods that we need. There should be a stack in here too, yep. Um, now we just need to get home. That took a while, but I have everything I need and ended up with 46 shulker shells too. I'm going to quickly drop everything off at home so I can run to the nearest crimson forest. I need to grind out the last item on the list before I can get building. I don't know if this forest will be big enough. I mean, I'm gonna need 19 stacks of weeping vines. So, I got to work. Unlike the Enrods, weeping vines serve almost no purpose in the build. I genuinely only want the vines for decoration alone. There we go. All right, three, six, nine, 12, 15, 18, 19, 19 stacks. Let's get home. That took ages, but with that, I could finally start building. I just got to get all of my resources together and move to the end. Everything's going to go wrong. I'm not ready. I'm not ready for this. Here we go. However, when I set up shop, I realized that I have no idea what I'm doing. I'm supposed to build a mushroom covering an enderman farm without anything breaking. And I can't build organic structures for the life of me. Ugh. Instead of throwing myself into the void, I built the mushroom in a separate creative world and used a mod called Light Matica to show me a ghost of the build in survival. Oh my god, that looks so cool. Before you think it's cheating, Light Matica doesn't give me any of the resources, and I have to place each block myself. All it does is show me what the build looks like, so I don't mess anything up. And that's super important to me. If I place one block wrong, this whole project tumbles. So I started at the very bottom of the build. Glass. All right. What? Why did you disappear? Oh, you took my glass. You... Ooh. Having to drop myself 20 blocks into the void is terrifying. But I want the mushroom to have this drippy look, and this is the only way to get that done. I kept accidentally staring Enderman in the eye and almost getting myself killed. I'm sorry. I'm... This is really difficult for me guys, I'm sorry. With that and the impending void below me, I need to be more careful. But next up was the base of the mushroom. I don't have a good spot to place my shulker, so holding them in my inventory is nerve wracking. But building the killing chamber and the base of the mushroom stem gives me somewhere to stand and that eases my worries. But while I was building, I noticed something. Oh, some of these are just from the, oh my God. Some of these are just from the schematic. This was a problem. I didn't realize I left a space for enderman to spawn in the schematic but it's an easy fix, right? Wait a minute. If they can only spawn at light level zero, then why don't I just light this place up? Silly me. <laughs> oh, but I didn't realize just how silly I was. Oh wait, but the thing is, is like, it's not about them spawning in here. It's about them even being able to teleport here in the first place. Okay, so instead of torches, I filled in the empty space with layers so Enderman would stay out. I continued building up the shaft of the mushroom, but by the time I got to the top, I realized I had a problem. Do you remember when I said that there are almost no blocks that Enderman can't teleport to? Yeah, sandstone is not one of them. So while I've been building, these guys have been slowly turning my mushroom into their campsite. Good thing I knew this would happen, so I'm pulling out some of that handy carpet and kicking them off my farm. I really like this part because after adding a few end rods and extra rings to the shaft, it added so much depth and life to the build. <laughs> it looks like... <laughs> I can't say what it looks like. Hmm... That's starting to look like something devious. So I'm gonna save my video from getting taken down and move on to the cap. But this is where things start to get stressful. I'm starting by building the lamelle, lamelle, lamella, the, the gills of the mushroom. Here I'm working in a clock pattern so I can build in the end rods at the same time and get it all done in one fell swoop. I know as I place more blocks, there would be more opportunities for an enderman to spawn in, which is fine on its own, but I need to place hundreds of these bamboo blocks, and enderman spawning while I build the rest of the cap would make it super tedious. So I came up with a plan. Although waiting to build the spawn platform for last sounds like a good idea, like so I wouldn't have enderman constantly spawning where I'm trying to build, it's actually not that smart. Instead, I'm building the spawn platform first. This gives the Enderman a distraction and fills up the mob cap so I can worry about building the rest of the mushroom in peace. I'll start with the outline of the cap to give me an easy platform to build up. However, I apparently never heard of consistency because instead of building the whole thing bottom up like I have for the entire build, I decided it would be better to block in each color. What I mean is that the cap is made up of two colors, red and green, so I'll build up as much red as I can until I'm blocked by green on both sides. Then I'll do the same thing except with the green palette. But it was during this part of the build that I almost lost 
Everything. Is this mine now? I was gonna say, is it? After everything I've been through, was I gonna lose it all to this? Oh! Oh my god! Oh my god, you don't, don't ever scare me like that again! Oh my god! And by everything, I mean three stacks of blocks. But I scared you, didn't I? Oh! That scared me so bad. I put on this elytra thinking, oh, wouldn't it be cool if I had to jump into the void to save my tool or something? I didn't think I'd actually have to jump. After that traumatizing scare out of the way, I carefully filled in the rest of the mushroom cap and moved on to the final step of the build, the weeping vines. We're almost done, but I feel like I should explain myself a little. Here is the skeleton of the farm. It's designed by more tings. And looking at it like this, you can clearly see why I want to build a mushroom. I mean, it already looks like a bigger version of the Minecraft mushrooms. I probably could have built a design that made it look more like a pillar. That way I would have less of a cap to worry about spawn proofing, but that seemed too easy. Also, once I got the idea of a space mushroom in my head, there was no stopping me. I just got done with the vines and this is just looking magnificent. It's also completely functional. After some more wholesome testing, there wasn't one enderman where he wasn't supposed to be, which means this project was successful. However, now that I look at this red and green combination, something's off. Oh, that looks like a certain mob. A new certain mob. The sniffer. It looks like the sniffer. I can't believe I just spent the last three days building this thing for it to turn out like the sniffer. I gotta go, guys. Until next time.